Yo what's up guys it's Atrix here today in this video we'll be taking a look at an brand new open source windows emulator for android devices which is capable of running games like GTA 5 and much more this windows emulator is known as dark os and it is completely open source available on its github page just like the other windows emulators like mobox and winlater dark os is also a project based on wine it requires termux as well as box 36 and box 64 but it is one of the best windows emulators because when i tried it out i just realized that it has so many customers customizations and configurations that you can tweak it has all the up-to-date dx wrappers all the up-to-date drivers and much more the compatibility is really amazing some of its features are as follows g streamer support is present which is required for running games like resident evil 7 they will make cry fire and amid evil dedicated configuration app has been provided which we'll take a look at in today's video you can even configure box 64 slash box 36 plus dynarec direct updates are also present including wine manager debug mode mango herd which is an on-screen display it will let you know the useful information like fps cpu etc gpu driver can be changed switch input bridge versions and some useful shortcuts such as hitting the fi key will automatically open task manager you can change the theme background or resolution of the wine desktop with that being said let's talk about the minimum requirements so you will need android version 10 or above and this simulator only works on snapdragon processors for now as you can see root is not required most of the android phones equipped with mali gpu can run directx games using mesa virgil but unfortunately virgil is not added yet in the dark os windows emulator along with that support for non snapdragon chips is pending so that will be added pretty soon because it's still in early development with that being said let's start using this simulator to set it up you will need to copy the code present in its official github page so just go ahead and copy it and open the termux app as usual Afterwards, just go ahead and paste the code for the dark OS which you can see right here. So after pasting this code, you will have to tap on the enter button and wait for a few seconds. Now it will uh, set up the Termux packages first and then only we can proceed with setting up the dark OS simulator and the setup procedure is very simple. To start off, it will ask you that storage directory is already existing. Now if you are using other emulators like Mobox or anything else that works with the Termux app, then you can type and, and then tap on the enter button. But if you want to freshly add this simulator without uh, any complications then just go ahead and type y afterwards tap on the enter button and wait for a few seconds until the setup process starts once it starts setting up you'll need to wait for two to three minutes until everything is completed dark OS simulator is now starting it is creating wine prefix again this process will take around one to two minutes depending on your device specification and one thing that is different with dark OS simulator is the fact that whenever you open termux app it will always instantaneously start the emulator you don't don't need to type any commands which can be a plus side as well as a downside if you use other emulators like mobox but in my opinion dark os is really well optimized in my testing and you guys can test it out too if you don't like it then probably you can uninstall it all right there we go guys prefix has been set up and dark os will be successfully started on your android devices just like mobox simulator it will automatically open the uh, termux x11 app on your android devices and as you will be able to see in the bottom automatically a dark os configuration tab will be opened so if we just go ahead and tap on this tab you will realize that there are so many options directly implemented in the dark os itself instead of a uh, mobox simulator which provides you setting before starting the emulator well uh, every time you change a setting you get the apply apply changes option at the top and afterwards you will have to reboot it so there is also an reboot button given but let me just go ahead and showcase every single setting that is present so first of all we get some custom environments at the bottom we also have a section for adding tweaks in the dark OS so if we just go and tap here you will be able to see that we can change funds we can change DLL and also add some apps we can also switch the input bridge versions so currently as you will be able to see the input version is now changed to 1.1.9 now depending on the uh, input bridge which you will use this is very important you also get options such as gpu driver so if you just go and tap here you can change or choose the gpu drivers according to your device so if you have an adreno 6 series gpu which is snapdragon 8 gen 1 processor below devices then you can go with adreno 6 series drivers if you have snapdragon 8 gen 1 or above go with adreno 7 series gpu and we'll also enable mango herd so mango herd has been enabled successfully reboot to apply changes so we'll just go and tap on the reboot option and then wait for a few seconds now at first when you start using this simulator it will seem a bit difficult but nonetheless it is very easy to use so let's say you just open uh, your file manager 
If you just go ahead and open your D directory, then you'll notice that your entire device storage will be showcased, which is a very unique feature. This is not present in any other emulators, not even WinLater. So it can uh, open any folder from your device. Whereas in other emulators, you had to open a specific folder and inside that only you could have stored your games. Uh, so that is really amazing feature of the Dark OS emulator. Also, I forgot to mention this, but if you want to change the DXVK version, then just go ahead and tap on the DXVK version changer. You will be able to see that it gets a lot of DXVK wrappers, for example 2.3.1, DXVK Dev, D3D 8.20 is also present and our DXVK 1.10.3 which will be by default is also present. So you can change the DXVK versions according to the game that you will be trying out. You also get the option to change container. So in the drop down menu you can create multiple containers and set uh, multiple presets which is very useful and change all the settings according to your preferences for example in container 2 you can apply the best settings for gtfi and in container 1 you can apply the best settings for stability and so on you will be able to use container according to your needs with that being said let me go ahead and close the dark os configuration now that we have successfully set up the dark os simulator let me just go ahead and open it on my iq12 with snapdragon 8 gen 3 where we'll be trying out gtfi and by default when you open the Termux app it will automatically open the Dark OS simulator as I mentioned before. To stop the Dark OS simulator you will need to open Termux and then press 1 then tap enter. Nonetheless there we go Dark OS has successfully started. Now let me load up GTA 5 and I'll be back. Alright there we go guys as you will be able to see GTA 5 is about to start on the Dark OS simulator and let me just go ahead and tell you guys it will absolutely work just like Mobox simulator on all supported devices. and. Uh, with the help of input bridge you can just go ahead and tap here and the on-screen touch controls will also be enabled. So if you want to find out how well will GTA 5 work on my Android device then we'll need to complete our today's like goal which is going to be 200 likes and I'll upload the dedicated gameplay test of GTA 5 on the Dark OS emulator. With that being said that's going to be it for today's video. Thanks for watching make sure to hit that like button subscribe turn on all notifications as I upload similar videos on my channel. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.